Hi there. Welcome to Montessori, Creativity and the Meaning of Life. I'm your host, Robin Norgren, and you can find all the work that I do over at www.robinnorgren.com. This is a series called Musings from a Monk, and it's based on uh, some essays that I found in uh, Jer- Jeremy Driscoll's book, A Monk's Alphabet. Hope you enjo- enjoy. C is for continuity. There is, of course, a continuity in my life from who I was as a child to the man I now am. There is an explanation for how and why I am who I am, but I have lost the thread. I forget how I got here. What would happen if I should remember, should recover the thread? C is for creation. The whole created world is already God's open and gracious communication of himself. One needn't go elsewhere or leave it behind in order to meet him. Our inevitable encounter with created realities is already our encounter with God. If after that God wishes also to communicate even more of himself somehow then of course it is his choice as to how. In fact, when we, what we see in Jesus is that God, using his creation as a foundation through which he continues to communicate, also does even more. The becoming flesh of the eternal word is the model and pattern of his continually unfolding choice. God himself immediately present in his mediating creation, recapitulating everything in heaven and on earth in Christ. Man gives voice to voiceless creation, but the incarnate word gives voice to voiceless man. C is for cross. I was praying before the painted cross in the abbot's chapel. It is hundreds of years old, going back to the 13th or 14th century. It is beautiful. The dead body of Christ is so giving, filled with light, and surrounded by angels. I thought of it hanging somewhere, looking like that, every day during all those centuries. I thought of all the events of history that have unfolded. And no matter how diverse the materials of history and the continents on which all the various things have happened, this cross was hanging somewhere, absorbing the events, judging them all, suited to every situation. It is art's way of saying what the sacraments also accomplish in their own way. The hour of Jesus dying is also an hour which does not pass away and which draws all things to itself. C is for crowds. I was praying after Compline one evening before the Blessed Sacrament and became aware after about 10 minutes of of Father Martin, age 92, rising cautiously genuflecting, and then advancing slowly and quietly down the hall into the cloister of the monastery. It occurred to me that heaven for him, and hopefully also for me, will not be altogether different from that moment. Adoration, silence, a moving along forward into a great blank of something both familiar and unknown, and he and I being together, but focusing on the Lord. What was especially new for me in this insight was noticing that in my thinking about heaven, I usually tend to have a sense, only half explicit but solidly there, of crowds, crowds of angels and saints and a great communion of adoration. But in this moment, there was such silence and simplicity and intimacy 
and my being with the Lord. And I could sense that kind of a moment extending itself right on into heaven with people like Father Martin walking along the side of my consciousness, only thousands more like him, and countless number of angels everywhere. And yet still, my intimacy with the Lord, or my great emptiness in his presence, or whatever it is. C is for crumbling. The world seems more and more to be crumbling. More people are awaking to the strange mood. Folks are really acting crazy, and there is a vicious spirit abroad in the land. I'm feeling so tired of it, and as I try to pray in response, I feel my own weakness, and I struggle to hope. For it seems my way of faith and the church are crumbling too, and my monastery, and the things I do. From one angle, I look at all this with relative dispassion and think through several possible constructs for understanding it. The best case scenario for my coming to grips with the despair that threatens to overwhelm me personally is that this is simply an invitation to deeper faith and hope. If my way is particularly dark, and yet I still push through, then this could be useful to others. A sort of pioneering effort through the new territory of this strange moment in the history of the world. Worst case scenario is that the wickedness in us all has been somehow unleashed and the world will finish first in a savage bat bloodbath and finally in a dirty nuclear holocaust. With the same dispassion and clarity, it seems a clarity to me, though it may not be. I try to pray. My prayer is either just what is called for or a huge nothing which at least causes no harm. I shall try to persevere in prayer, despite the severe temptation to think that it is nothing and that no one is listening. I see no way out of this dilemma because prayer with no one listening may be some mysterious being conformed to the cross of Christ, who after all cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Or it may simply be no one listening. The safest bet is to continue in hope. It seems impossible to me to imagine or conceive anything greater than the content and claims of Christian faith. Obviously not these as poorly represented, but as they really are. These do not seem human in their origin. They are so refined. They are more than human. They are divine. Is their greatness an argument for their truth? If so, why does it not persuade all, or at least more? Living the Christian life is the only argument, the only way forward. I am trying to live from the old truths in this new and changed time. Thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure and subscribe in your favorite podcast venue and share this with a friend you think might be encouraged by it.